Good morning. We're talking about two hymns today and three hymn tunes. Remember, hymn means the text and hymn tune means the music. So we're talking about the hymn by Brian Wren, Christ Upon the Mountain Peak. Brian Wren uh, is a, I believe he's a congregational minister. He's British and he's a wonderful 20th century hymn writer. He was in Naples uh, a couple of years ago at the uh, United Church of Christ on Creighton Road and did a, a big, uh, wonderful uh, conference and lecture demonstration with his wife about hymns. He, he found himself in northern England in a very poor working class neighborhood and choosing hymns was difficult. All this flowery Victorian metaphorical language with all these obscure biblical allusions he, he, he didn't feel would speak to his people so he wrote words and one of the great ones in the you should look, look up all his hymns in the hymnal 1982 they're all good. Christ Upon the Mountain Peak and when he wrote this, uh, a friend of his, a British composer and author uh, named Peter Cutts, he asked, uh, Brian Wren asked uh, Peter Cutts to write a tune for this, this great, great hymn text. And here's the tune, Christ Upon the Mountain Peak. It's number 130 in our hymn book. The editor of the uh, Hymnal Companion says, uh, although this hymn tune is harmonically adventurous, the melody is not as difficult as it looks or sounds. That reminds me of Mark Twain's supposed remark about the music of Richard Wagner. Twain said, Wagner's music is better than it sounds. So, I don't think anyone sings this hymn to that tune, not that I know of. Instead, they sing it to a tune by Cyril Taylor, written in the 60s, which I will now play. I love that hymn tune, and we sing it uh, seasonally quite often here at Trinity by the Cove. And I was uh, uh, analyzing it, and I, I see some sequences and some very attractive uh, architectural strengths in this hymn. For instance, the first measure, the fifth measure, that's one repeated uh, leitmotif theme, modular. A melodic fragment uh, which happens with four stanzas eight times and people enjoy singing it eight times. Then there's another little fragment in measure two and then in measure six and seven and then it builds to the highest note in the whole hymn comes on the word angels with the saints and angels praise him stanza two shout through them their joyful greetings joy is the highest note nations cry aloud in wonder let creation now adore him so this this hymn has a lot of very strong points to it let me play it through one more time since since i like the tune so much i hope you, you won't mind <laughs> Now, we have the other hymn today we're talking about is O Zion Haste, Thy Mission High Fulfilling. A popular mission hymn came into the hymnal in 19, sorry, 1892. 
when it went from the original text to the text that's in our hymnal, Mary Ann Thompson's words were altered slightly. For instance, well, you know, a lot of these old ones, man and sons and him and he and all that, uh, seem to exclude everything feminine, which uh, in some texts you can alter without any, any problem. For, uh, sometimes you have to paraphrase. Uh, a simple example. And died on earth that man might live above. Changed to, and died on earth that all might live above. Good Christian men rejoice. Good Christian friends rejoice. Doesn't mess up the vowel, doesn't mess up the rhythm, anything like that. But they didn't dare change and crown thy good with brotherhood. And in our book, they didn't dare change God rest you merry gentle men. Although some, some hymnals have God rest you merry gentle folk. Uh, one of the other other ones that they had to paraphrase was this, give of thy sons to bear the message glorious. And they changed that to send heralds forth to bear the message glorious. That's heralds, H-E-R-A-L-D-S, not men named Harold. That sounds like a, a plea for giving money to uh, seminaries. Give of thy sons to bear the message glorious. Give of thy wealth to speed them on their way. I never thought about that. Well, anyway, this was an English hymn, but it sounds like an American tune. Um, let me play it. It's, 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 uh, it's a little old-fashioned, and a lot of uh, older people love it, uh, including me. Thank you. 